Many mathematical models involve high-order derivatives, but the MATLAB ODE solvers only work with systems of first-order ordinary differential equations. So we have to rewrite the models to just involve first-order derivatives. Let's see how to do that with a very simple uh, model, the harmonic oscillator. x double prime plus x equals zero. This involves a second-order derivative. So to write it as a first-order system, we introduce the vector y, which is, it, this is a vector with two components, x and the derivative of x. We're just changing notation to let um, y have two components, x and x prime. Then the derivative of y is the vector with x and x double prime. So the differential equation now becomes y2 prime plus y1 equals 0. Do you see how we've just rewritten this differential equation? So um, y2, y2 prime is playing the role of x double prime. Once you've done that, everything else is easy. The vector system is now y1 y2 prime is y2 minus y1. The first component says y1 prime is y2. That's just saying that uh, the derivative of the first component is the second. Here's the differential equation itself. y2 prime is minus y1 is the actual harmonic oscillator differential equation. When we write this as an autonomous function for MATLAB, here's the autonomous function. F is an autonomous function of t and y that doesn't depend upon t. The first, it's a vector now, the, a column vector. The first component of F is y2, and the second component is minus, minus y1. The first component here is just a matter of notation. Uh, all the content is in the second component, which expresses the differential equation. Now for some initial conditions. Suppose the initial conditions are that x of 0 is 0 and x prime of 0 is 1. In terms of the vector y, that's y1 of 0. The first component is y is 0 and the second component is 1 or in vector terms, the initial vector is 0, 1. That implies the solution is sine t and cosine t. Uh, when we write the initial condition in uh, MATLAB, it's the column vector 0, 1. Let's bring up the MATLAB command window. Here's the differential equation y1 prime is y2, and y2 prime is minus y1. Here's the harmonic oscillator. We're going to integrate from 0 to 2 pi because they're trig fun functions, and I'm going to ask for output at steps of 2 pi over 36, which corresponds to every 10 degrees, like the uh, runways at an airport. I'm going to need an initial condition uh, y naught is uh, zero. It need a column vector zero one uh, for the two components. I'm going to use ODE forty five, and if I call it with no output arguments, uh, ODE forty five of the differential equation f t span the uh, time interval and why not the initial condition. If I call OD45 with no output arguments, it just plots the solution automatically. And here we get a graph of uh, cosine t starting at 1 and sine t starting at 0. Now if I go back to the command window and ask to capture the output in t and y, uh, I then get um, 
vectors of output, uh, 37 steps, a vector T, and a two components Y, the two columns containing sine and cosine. And now I can plot them in the phase plane, plot, plot Y1 against Y2 if I regularize the axes, I get a nice plot of a circle with um, small circles uh, every 10 degrees, as I said, like the runways at an airport. The uh, Van der Poel oscillator was introduced in 1927 by a Dutch electrical engineer to model oscillations in a circuit. Uh, involving vacuum tubes. It has a nonlinear damping term. It's since been used to model phenomena in all kinds of fields, including geology and neurology. It exhibits chaotic behavior. Uh, we're interested in it for numerical numerical analysis because as the parameter mu increases, the um, problem becomes increasingly stiff. Uh, to write it as a first-order system for use with the MATLAB uh, ODE solvers, we introduce the vector y containing x and x prime. So y prime is x prime and x double prime. And then the differential equation is written so that y prime is, the first component of y prime is, is y2. Um, and then the differential equation is written in the second component of y. Uh, here's the damping, the nonlinear damping term, minus y1. When mu is zero, uh, this is, uh, becomes the harmonic oscillator. And uh, here it is, is the, uh, anonymous function. Let's run some experiments with the Van der Poel oscillator. First of all, I have to define the value of mu, and I'll pick a modest value of mu. Mu equals 100. And now with mu set, I can define the uh, anonymous function. Uh, it involves a value of mu, and um, here is the Van der Poel equation in the second component of f. I'm going to gather statistics about how hard uh, the ODE solver works. And for that, I'm going to use ODE set and tell it I want to turn on stats. I need an initial condition. Now I'm going to run ODE 45 on this problem. And I'm with uh, specifying just a starting value of T and a final value of T, uh, ODE 45 is going to pick its own uh, time steps. And I know with uh, T final equals uh, 460, it's going to integrate over um, about two periods of the solution. Now we can watch it go for a while. It's taken lots of steps and it's beginning to slow down as it takes more and more steps. Now this begins to get painfully slow as it runs into a stiffness. I'll uh, turn off the camera for a while here so you don't have to watch all these steps. And uh, I'll turn it back on as we, we're trying to get up here to 460. And I'll turn it back on as we get uh, close to the end.
Okay, well, the camera's been off about three minutes, and you can see how far we've gotten. Uh, we're uh, nowhere is near the end, so I'm going to press the stop button here. And uh, we'll go back to the command window. And, uh, oh, so we did gather this. Uh, we didn't get to the end here. Uh, let me back off on the uh, time interval and try try this value here. See how that works. So this is going to still take lots of steps, but we'll be able to. This will go over about one period. We'll actually get to get to the end here. I'll leave the camera on till we uh, till we finish. Okay, so that took uh, a little under a minute, but, uh, and it took um, nearly fifteen thousand steps. So let's run it with a stiff solver. There. So it took uh, half a second and only 500 steps. So there's a, a modest uh, example of stiffness here. So uh, let's examine the uh, the Van der Poel equation uh, using uh, using the stiff solver. Let's capture the output and plot it because that plot wasn't very interesting. I want to plot it a couple of different ways. And again, I want to go back up to the uh, capture a couple periods. Uh, Let's plot one of the comp components as a function of time. And here it is. Here's the Van der Poel equation. And you can see it has an initial transient. And then it settles into this uh, uh, periodic oscillation with these uh, really steep, uh, steep uh, spikes here. And uh, even this uh, stiff solver is working hard uh, in, as the, at these rapid changes. We've got a lot of fair, fair number of points in here as it, as it chooses the step size. And now let's go back uh, to the command line and do a uh, phase pane plot. So here's the phase plane plot of this um, oscillator with damping, and it's nowhere near a circle, which it would be if mu is zero. And this is the characteristic behavior of the uh, Vanderpoel uh, Vander oscillator.